Hey everyone, welcome back with another session of Geography. I hope you all are doing well. So today we'll continue the last segment of this chapter that is the physical features of India. Now we have already uh, discussed about the Himalayan mountains, northern plains, peninsular plateau. So today we'll start the proceedings with the Indian desert and complete uh, session with coastal plains and the islands. Okay, so let's begin. First of all, the Indian desert. Now see guys, the Indian desert lies towards the western margins of the Aravalli hills and it's an undulating sandy plain covered with sand dunes. Undulating that means that moves up and down just like waves and forming curves. Fine. Now this region receives very low rainfall below 150 mm per year and it has arid climate with very low vegetation cover. Arid climate that means very dry climate. Okay. Now streams, if we talk about the streams, streams appear during the rainy season and soon after they disappear into the sand and as they do not have enough water to reach the sea. And if you see river, like Luni is the only large river in this region. Okay, now as we are talking about the desert, the most important feature, the different dunes, sand dunes. Now, first one we have that is the Burchans or we call it Burkhan. Now these are the crescent shaped dunes, uh, sand dunes as found in the deserts of Turkestan. Now this term Burchan or you can call it Burkhan, it was introduced in the year 1881 by Russian naturalist Alexander von Middendorf. Alright, now what are these uh, Burchans? Now these Burchan dunes, they form where conditions are ideal and they require a flat landscape and winds from only one direction and limited amount of sun. Alright, and because of this, they form this crescent shape. Now Burchan dunes, they point against the wind. Alright, that's the thing. Now second, another one we have that is the longitudinal dunes. Now these dunes, they become more prominent near the Indo-Pakistan boundary. Now what are, what are these longitudinal dunes? Now these longitudinal dunes, these are also called linear dunes. Now these dunes look like large parallel needle like features. Alright. And they are straight and long unlike the typical dunes that you see as Burchans and all. Now these dune type they forms when sand is not in excess in limited proportion and when wind blows in one constant direction over an extended period of time. These dunes will migrate in the direction of the wind from where it's blowing. Okay, these are the different dunes. Now, next up we have that is the coastal plains. Now see guys, the peninsular plateau is flanked by stretch of narrow coastal strips running along the Arabian Sea on the west and the Bay of Bengal on the east. Okay, now the western coast sandwiched between the western ghats and the Arabian Sea is a very narrow plain if we consider it with the eastern ghats. Now these western ghats it consists of three main sections. Now the northern part of the coast is called the Konkan that comes under the Mumbai Goa belt that is called the Konkan coast. Now in the central portion, it's a very uh, narrow portion that is the central part is called the Kannar plain and while the southern section it stretch it's referred to as the Malabar coast. Now the same way the plains along the Bay of Bengal are wide and level and these are the plains in the eastern Ghats. Now in the northern part it is referred to as the northern Sarkar while the southern part is known as the Kormandal coast. Now if you see guys, large river such as the Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna and Kaveri, they have formed extensive delta on this coast, the eastern side. And on the western side, we have major rivers such as Narmada and Tapti. Fine. 
Now, if you see, these are the different pictures that I have put in here. These are Konkan coast, Kannar plain, Malabar coast, and next up we have the Koromandal and the Northern Sirka. Fine. Now, another one that is the Lake Chilka, we know it as Chilka Lake. So, it's an important feature along the eastern coast. Now, you see, guys, the Chilka Lake is the largest saltwater lake in India and it lies in the state of Orissa. To the south of the Mahanadi Delta. Fine, these are the stuff. Now, next up, we have that is the island groups of India. Island groups of India that comes as the Lakshadweep Islands and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Now, if you see, guys, uh, the Lakshadweep group of islands, this lies close to the Malabar coast of Kerala. Okay, so these Lakshadweep islands, this group of islands, this is composed of small coral islands. All right, and earlier they were known as Lakshadweep, Minikoi, and Amindi. Now, in the year 1973, these were named as Lakshadweep islands. And this Lakshadweep, it covers small area of 32 square kilometer. And the Kavarati Island is the administrative headquarters of Lakshadweep. And this island group has great diversity of flora and fauna. And if you see the Pitti Island, the Pitti Island which is uninhabited, it has a bird sanctuary. It's a renowned one actually. The pity bird sanctuary. Fine. Now, when we talk about this Lakshadweep, Lakshadweep, we know it as the coral island. So, what is the meaning of these corals? What are these corals? Now, coral polyps, these are like short lived microscopic organisms which live in colonies. Fine. Now, they flourish in shallow, mud free, and warm waters. And they secrete calcium carbonate. And the coral secretion and their skeletons, they form coral deposit in the form of reefs. The form of reefs. And if you see, they are mainly of three kinds. Barrier reef, fringing reef and the atolls. Okay. Now if you see the fringing reef, now these are directly attached to a shore or borders it with an intervening shallow channel or lagoon now for example the greater caribbean region it comes in as fringing reef now if you see the barrier reef these are separated from a mainland or island shores by deep channel or lagoon for example if you see the great barrier reef okay of australia now Third one, that atolls or atoll reef, these are more or less circular or continuous barrier reef, extends all the way around the lagoon without a central island. For example, in the Pacific Ocean, we have lots of atolls. Fine, these are the stuff. Now, next up, if we see the Andaman and Nicobar Islands, the elongated chains of islands located in the Bay of Bengal extending from the north and south is known as the Andavan and Nicobar Islands. Now, if you see guys, in the uh, southern side, these, uh, these are Andavan and Nicobar Islands. So, they are bigger in size and are more numerous and scattered. Now, the entire group of islands is divided into two broad, broad categories. Now, the Andavan in the north and the Nicobar in the southern portion. Now, the, it's believed that these islands are an elevated portion of submarine mountains. And these island groups are of great strategic importance for the country. So, how its strategic importance? Now, about 572 islands are found in the Andaman and Nicobar regions of India. And many of them are separated by the 10 and the 6 degree water channels. Fine. Now, these Andaman Nicobar Islands, as I said, these are like strategically important zones for the development of naval capabilities. And they also play an important role in controlling access in the Indian Ocean. 
okay now also deployed in this region uh, many ships have been deployed for the purpose of surveillance as they extend arms of the country and they also act as a radar stations to provide valuable information and along with all this apart from that island uh, host ecological reserves of birds fish and other species of flora and fauna that are indigenous to lands okay so we can call it like there is a great diversity of flora and fauna in this group of islands now these islands are like close to the equator and they experience equatorial climate and has thick forest cover equatorial climate that means uh, it's too hot as well as the percentage of rainfall is also very high because of that it has got thick forest cover now along with all these guys another information that is uh, india's only active volcano is found on barren island in andaman and nicobar group of islands this way it is the only active volcano it's found here all right so if we conclude all these all the different uh, physical features that we have discussed uh, throughout the different sessions a detailed account of the different physiographic units highlights the unique features of each region and it would however be clear that each region complements the other and makes the country richer in its natural resources if you see the mountains are the major sources of water and the forest will on the other hand the northern plains are the granaries of the country and they also provide the base for early civilizations if you see the plateau the plateau is a storehouse of minerals which has played a crucial role in the industrialization of the country and here the coastal region and the island groups they provide sites for fishing and different port activities so thus we can conclude that all these diverse physical features of the land have immense future possibilities of development they have future different possibilities of development and we must take care of all this okay so that's it that's all we have in this session so until the next time with some different topics bye bye